Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the Bromwich inversion formula for the Laplace transform. Let's recall that the Laplace transform, f tilde of z, which is the integral from 0 to infinity of f of t, so f of t is just a function which maps 0 infinity into r, it's a real valued function, and then I hit it with e to the negative z t dt, is the complex Laplace transform, is the complex extension of the Laplace transform. Defined on the set real part of z bigger than a, for some, a greater than zero, okay? Whatever the abacus of convergence of the Laplace transform is, I can extend it to the whole half plane beyond that point of convergence, right? So typically you'd say, if S is bigger than A, then the Laplace transform exists. Now, it transitions to the real part of Z being larger than A. That's a half plane where the Laplace transform exists in the complex plane. And the formula for the complex plane, the formula for the Laplace transform on the real line is the formula for the Laplace transform on that half plane by the identity principle, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is the following. Since F tilde is defined on a half plane, if it decays like one over Z to the K for some K greater than or equal to one, if it decays like mod z to the negative k for k greater than or equal to 1 for as z goes to infinity, then we can use our half plane extension theorem of Cauchy's theorem. We can write f tilde of z is 1 over, well, sorry, it's f tilde of zeta actually then write for zeta in this half plane I can use zeta in that half plane then we have this extension formula so it's the formula we get we know how to do these formulas by Cauchy then f tilde of zeta is 1 over 2 pi i the limit as beta goes to infinity the integral gamma minus i beta, gamma plus i beta, f, f tilde of z over zeta minus z, dz. And of course, what is gamma over here? So gamma is just a real number that is bigger than a. So gamma over here is going to be bigger than a. Okay, so it's in that half plane. And then beta is just another real number, so the model of the complex line. Okay, so that's what we're doing over here. So we're representing f tilde of zeta in the following way. So here's our complex plane, I R. Here's gamma over here. So what we do, and of course the function's holomorphic over there, like that. And so what we're going to do, so that's my value of a, right? That's my half plane where we're holomorphic. What we're going to do is we're going to draw this line over here, like so. Gamma minus I beta gamma plus i beta, and we can recover the value of zeta over here, so there's a point in zeta over there, any zeta I wish, I can do this by using this, I technically I'd have to draw a circle over here, but that circle is by this decay is going to cancel out, so I can use the residue theorem to comp compute this value over here, just as this limit over here, right? Excellent. Now what I'm going to do is the cool part, and now, now I'm going to skip over some analysis here, okay? Full disclosure, skip over the analysis. The analysis is going to involve just using Fubini's theorem and uniform conversions. I'll prove that in a further video, okay? So I'll prove the actual rigorous way to do this in a further video, but I want to give you the intuition for why this works for the Laplace transform. Now, I'll take the inverse Laplace transform of the Laplace transform. Cool, right? So, oh, it's with respect to zeta. So I know how to do the inverse Laplace transform of one over zeta minus z. Cool, right? So recall, recall, but the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus a is just e to the a t, like that, right? Good. That's the fundamental thing. I can prove this with Taylor series easily, right? Okay, then what this tells me over here is this tells me that f of t, the inverse Laplace transform, is going to be what? It's going to be 1 over 2 pi i. 
the limit as beta goes to infinity, the integral gamma minus i beta, gamma plus i beta, and then f tilde of z, e to the z t dz. So if I give you an inverse Laplace transform, if I give you a Laplace transform, f tilde of z, that's the, that's the Laplace transform, I can do the inverse Laplace transform by this formula over here. So this is a formula for the inverse Laplace transform. Awesome, right? And this is the Bromwich formula. The Bromwich integral, the Bromwich formula, okay? Now what I want to do is I want to take this Bromwich formula and then figure out how to use it, okay? So here's what we're going to do. What we're going to do now is select r large enough, select r large enough, such that, such that what? Such that all the singularities of f hat of z lie inside the half circle So what I'm going to do over here is basically just going to draw a circle like that, okay? Call it circle CR, right? Inside a circle, gamma plus R e to the i theta, like that, okay? So in other words, I do gamma, that's going to be the center of my circle, right, plus R e to the i theta, make, th make sure they're all in this big enough circle, right? Then as beta goes to infinity, I'm eventually going to be able to actually capture this over here, right? Good. Now all the singularities of this function are over here, right? And of course, theta in, for theta between 0 and 2 pi. That, okay. Excellent. Let me just move over here, actually. It's a little too small. Okay, so all the singularities of this function of the Laplace transform, remember it's holomorphic over here, right? It's holomorphic over here, right? Which means all the singularities have to be on this left half plane, right? So there's some singularities over here. You can actually show their symmetric singularities if, they, if they're poles anyway, like that, okay? So there's the singularities are in this disk over here, right? Then I know by the residue theorem that if I integrate over this line, let's call that line L, and this circle over here, CR, that gives me a closed curve, right? So this integral over here, the limits, and of course as beta goes to infinity, R is going to infinity as well, right? Good. So now, what's going to happen over here? So let's estimate the integral on this curve over here, CR. So in other words, I claim that 1 over 2 pi i, and these are the singularities, so these are z equals zj, for j going from 1 up to n. Those are my singularities, singularities of f tilde of z, okay? 1 over 2 pi i, the limit as beta goes to infinity of the integral from gamma minus i beta to gamma plus i beta, which is our, our Laplace transform, this is our f of t, is equal to is equal to the sum, j goes from 1 to n, of the residue of f tilde of z, e to the zt, at the point z equals zj, plus, or minus rather, the integral over cr, 1 over 2 pi i, the integral over cr of f tilde of z e to the z t d z, right? And this, of course, is the limit. I need the limit over here. The limit as r goes to infinity. Okay, good. Excellent. Now let's examine this thing over here. So what can I say about that limit over here? The integral over cr of f tilde of z e to the z t d z is going to be the integral for where we're going from, we're going from 2 pi to 3 pi over 2, integral from uh, pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. Then I have f tilde, f tilde of gamma plus r e to the i theta. And then e to the zt, so that's going to be e to the t, 
e to the t, then gamma plus i, uh, excuse me, r e to the f theta, and then i r e to the i theta d theta. Okay, but what's going to happen in, in absolute? What's going to happen over here? So the only term in modulus that's going to survive. So modulus less than or equal to modulus of this and modulus of this over there. So the e to the i theta is going to cancel on modulus. This is going to be an e to the t gamma. That's just a fixed parameter in the problem. And then we have an r. Then we have a, a e to the i something. So that's going to be a sine and then a cosine, right? So this is going to be less than or equal to just r. This is r over here. R. And I'm going to say the maximum of f tilde on this circle, max f tilde on that circle, CR. And then what? And then um, this is going to be, this term over here is going to turn into what? It's going to be an e to the i, e to the negative t. Well, it's about a cosine t, right? So it's going to be e to the t cosine of theta, right? That's the term we're going to get that's going to survive. But between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, that's the same as negative sine. So this is going to be e to the negative, negative r sine theta and then t. So by Jordan's inequality, this exact term can be estimated by Jordan's inequality, and it's less, uh, and I can replace that with a what? Cosine on this interval is the same as a sine on the interval what? On the interval 0 to pi, right? Good. And so this is going to be times, the, Jordan says that's the reciprocal of that thing, so 1 over rt, so the r's are going to cancel out. Beautiful. So all I have left is this maximum over here, which says that if my, if my, I can claim now that if the maximum of f tilde, the Laplace transform on this circle, is going to zero, and that's something that should happen, right? So if, what do we want? We want f tilde of z in modulus to go to what? To go to zero on CR as R goes to infinity, right? So as R goes to infinity, won't that modulus happen? In this case, as R goes to infinity, this expression is going to go to zero. So as R goes to infinity, this expression is going to go to zero under reasonable decay assumptions of F tilde. Now, when we take Laplace transforms, if we remember back from ordinary differential equations, Laplace transforms all have this decay property, right? If it's a continuous function, if it's a smooth enough function, they will all have this decay property. Because you think about Laplace transforms, when you get you get one over S minus A, one over S squared plus one, S over S squared plus one, one over s to the fourth plus one. All of those functions are decaying along that uh, as r goes to infinity. The maximum value of those expressions are going to zero, right? Good. So now what does that tell us? That tells us over here that we have the, that this formula, this f of t formula, can be recovered how? f of t is this limit over here, but that limit is nothing more than just what? The sum of these residues over here, right? So in other words, if I sum up the residues of f tilde, the Laplace transform we have, times the function e to the zt, at all those points, that is a formula for the inverse Laplace transform using residues. Absolutely beautiful. In further videos, we'll do examples to verify that this formula actually goes to what we expect and see how it's actually much easier to do than using convolution or doing partial fractions. Thank you very much.